faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, intangible and formless as a thought, a mind from whom nothing is hidden, totally not good around campfires. It's the Martian Manhunter. Not who you were thinking? Okay, fine. But here's the thing. John Jones is one of the most powerful beings in the DC Universe, and entirely underrated. In fact, I'd go so far as to say he's just short of the most powerful, so powerful, I'd happily put him up against almost anyone in Marvel or DC confidently. But the question remains, who is he? Where did he come from? And why is he here? The short answer is Martian, from Mars and to hunt men. The long answer is, I'm xenobiologist and detective Dan Unthan, and this is the Doomcast. Introduced in Detective Comics 225 in 1955, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, is a Martian detective, beamed to Earth accidentally by an invention of Dr. Saul Erdell. The shock at his arrival killed Dr. Erdell, uh, and the guilt that John felt and his inability to return to Mars made him resolve to remain on Earth and become a crime fighter and fight crime he did eventually as a founding member of the Justice League. Through the years, he's been featured in some of the best incarnations of the League, the Justice League International and the Justice League cartoon, as well as Young Justice. Like Superman, he's an expatriate from his home planet, the last of a dead race, and also like Superman, he's also not the last of a dead race. Unlike Superman, he lived in his native culture. For many years, he had a family, he watched his people, and those closest to him become victims of a racist genocide. John's experience is similar, but still wholly different from Superman's. On Earth, he's lived in a culture in which he's never truly been welcome, having to hide in a humanoid form, specifically because he fears humans would never accept his native Martian form. In similar fashion, when he initially came to Earth in his first appearance, he disguised himself as a white man. But as time went on, more writers felt that with his origin and his solitude, combined with a black alter ego, made the character's solitude here a much more powerful statement on race. But overcoming overwhelming odds isn't the only thing that makes him the best. Is he really the best? Damn right he is. First, he's got strength and flight. And so what? Superman has that. Okay, Superman has heat vision, sure. And John has his atomic vision. Uh, but Superman can read books. John can read minds. And probably also books still, because I'm sure that they exist on Mars. His psychic ability is massive, second to none, even for a Malachandran. Side note, Malachandra is the name for Mars in C.S. Lewis's From Out the Silent Planet series, and is also used by DC. Anyhow, John is able to keep minds from all over the planet psychically connected from well off of Earth. He's sensitive enough to feel psychic disturbances even from other planets. But John's people had an incredibly strict code of ethics on psychic use, and as such, he rarely uses his power invasively as an offensive weapon. Because Martians considered it unauthorized mental intrusion, a crime worse than murder, the most grievous violation possible. More grievous than murder, because murdering a Martian is an insanely hard thing to do, because Martians have total control over every molecule in their body. That lets them shapeshift into anything, like other humanoids, but also dragons. Freaking Thanagarian hell beasts, or like hulks, or anything, homie. Nobody in the Justice League could stand up to him, period. Superman? Please. He would smoke Superman like a Swisher Sweet blunt. Superman throws a punch, and John just turns it into smoke, and then phases through Superman, gives him a light tippy tap and his Kryptonian cojones on the way through. Oh, did I not mention that John can become intangible at will, just like all Martians? Batman? Okay, he psychically projects himself into Batman's mind as Batman's dead parents. And then when Batman snaps out of it, which he inevitably does snap out of, BAM! Guess what? He's just shapeshifted into Batman's dead parents. You thought they were gone? Oh, you thought it was an illusion? Guess what? Here they are again. And then when Batman reaches out to try and, like, touch them, these perfect copies of his parents based on his own memories, they just disappear like smoke. How bad would that fuck with Batman? The Flash. Flash can't hit what he can't touch. Flash runs in for a punch, whiffs one through an intangible Martian, while John psychically hacks his medulla oblongata or whatever part of your brain that makes you shit, and then just makes him void his bowels at full speed. And as the Flash rolls forward at Mach 6, a bag of turds that's covered in the speed force, uh, I hear you say, uh, that would never happen. The Flash is too fast. Uh, John would never see him coming. Well, John doesn't need to see anyone, because while humans have five senses, John has nine, including sight that takes in the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum, and what that means is that John can see the speed force coming. 
And that's probably three of the most powerful leaguers. Name one single Avenger John doesn't mop the floor with in a no-holds-barred fight. The Hulk? Yeah. How about he just telepathically rewires Banner's brain so that the Hulk permanently forgets how to be angry? Or just buries the Hulk in a psychic casket that grows stronger and stronger as he struggles against it, and to bury it deep inside of something that Banner would never actually think of? Damn, I don't know, should I just write comics or something? You can not beat Martian Manhunter. He's a psychic, shape-shifting, alien zombie ghost with laser vision. Tell me how the f*** you beat that. You don't. You just get out of the way. Or you get fire. Yeah, Martians are insanely weak to fire in part because of the psychic chaos that it creates and also because of f***ing fire and literally anyone normal is weak to fire. That's not weird to be weak to fire. Like, it, if fire is your only weakness, that does make you pretty exceptional because I'm weak to fire but also to, like, cars, bullets, and, like, slightly old vegetables too. Like, it's ridiculous, but it's also like, oh, you're weak to fire, me too. But also, if someone drops a piano covered in glass and razors on you, you can just walk it off. That's pretty cool. The fire weakness was actually genetically engineered into the Green Martians by the Guardians of the Universe as a psychic tool to make them more peaceful. Yeah, the same Guardians of the Universe that ran the Green Lantern Corps into the ground. Anyway, the then warlike Green Martians actually needed to feel psychic pain, burning and suffering, in order to get the rocks off and reproduce, which is kind of kinky. And while John has been straight up lit on fire and died only to be resurrected later, John has one other weakness, which is, well, cookies. Yeah, Chocos, originally called Oreos for real, a chocolate sandwich cookie that has an effect on the Martian brain similar to heroin and created an addiction in John so intense that when Booster Gold and Blue Beetle decided that they were going to prank him by buying all of the Chacos in the entire city, uh, he went full crackhead, hulked out, and then nearly murdered everything in his path until he gorged himself on thousands of them. But while he's a frickin' powerhouse, John never gets his due in media outside of comics. Maybe not even in comics. In most cartoons, he's portrayed as being vastly more underpowered than he actually is. Uh, even in Supergirl, where he's an incredible supporting role, he still has... He's depicted as having trouble fighting Kryptonians. If DC was going to take a shot at making a superhero film that's unique and unforgettable, a Martian Manhunter would be pretty badass. Thanks, everybody. This has been the Doomcast. We'll see you next week.